Welcome to our presentation on the digital divide and digital inequality. We will be delving into the issue of the digital divide and digital inequality in Massachusetts, such as the lack of information and computer and technology skills, low income jobs, and the reduced opportunity to own computers and have access to the internet. Then, as the task force for the Massachusetts State Superintendent of Public Education, we will examine the seven options set forth and offer alternative solutions. The issue of the digital divide is the issue of the haves versus the have-nots. The major factors that determine these two categories are socioeconomic status, gender, age, educational background, and geographic location. The commonalities and correlations among the have-nots are that they tend to fall into one or more of the categories of low income, less education, lower literacy levels, unemployment, the elderly, the disabled, single parents, women and young girls, and those who come from rural areas. While many of the have-nots have neither the means nor the ability to access computers and the internet, the distinction of have-nots also includes the portion of the population who simply choose to be so. Digital inequality is the term used to describe a certain sector of the have-nots in the digital divide. Although some of the have-nots make the decision to not utilize technology and the internet, the vast majority of have-nots are so due to the lack of monetary and or educational means. Digital inequality is a redefined understanding of the digital divide that emphasizes a spectrum of inequality across segments of the population depending on differences among several dimensions of technology use and access. As the task force for the Massachusetts State Superintendent of Public Instruction, our research led us to significant proof that digital inequality is an issue in our own state. Although our state has set forth guidelines stating that 85% of our teachers should be using technology on a daily basis, currently only 53% of our teachers use technology for instructional purposes on a daily basis. Considering that 91% of our teachers use technology every day for professional purposes, more of our teachers should be utilizing technology in their instruction, but either do not know how or do not have access to the necessary equipment and or internet access. In 2009, 55% of our educators ranked themselves as proficient or advanced users of technology. While that is up from 42% in 2004, we still have a lot of room to grow. The lack of technological skill in our teachers certainly affects our students. Only 58% of 8th grade students are on grade level with technology skills. And while only 55% of our teachers are proficient or advanced in technology use, just over half of our educators received formal professional development for technology in 2009. As we know, digital inequality is partially related to skill level, but access to equipment and the internet is also a major factor. Here's how Massachusetts measures. While there are approximately 3.9 students per computer in our state, there is only one projector for every three classrooms and one interactive whiteboard for every eight classrooms. Most of our school's computers have internet access through their district's wide area networks, which leads to excessive numbers of computers on one connection, causing problems such as slow connection speeds. Option one, install computers in all public libraries in the state and expand the hours when computers are available. In Massachusetts, during August of 2010, the Boston Broadband Program was set up to supply 627 computers to the Boston Public Library branches, the Boston Housing Authority developments, and the Boston Center for Youth and Families by early 2011. When this is complete, nearly 18,000 people a week, representing a 40% increase in service, will be able to access broad 
campaign internet as well as software designed for various subject matters including workforce development, after school education, and gang intervention conflict resolution workshops. As far as the hours go for computers being available, I was not able to find any information of that being extended at any time. I have also included a link to reports on libraries around the world and how we compare and stack up. Option two, expand staffing and other resources so that public schools can be open to the public after normal school hours on weekends and during the summer months. I found positives and negatives in this issue. Positives were it would be great help for poor academic achievement, it would help prevent gang participation, it would help violence and drug use. The negative information I found was competition for space. Being a teacher myself, I realized having my room open to the public would be a challenge. Um, teachers working in their classrooms after school, preparing their lessons. Sport teams such as basketball, maybe in the gym, maybe other types of teams um, on the field, soccer of that sort, outside organizations such as Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. And then during the summer when we have summer school for children, having adults or other people wandering in the school may be a challenge. Physical integrity of the school. Um, taking care of the school property, respecting it, vandalism of that sort, overuse, maintenance, and repairs that need to be done, having more people using the facility, increased custodial costs, having to pay custodians to clean the school and or to repair things in the school on weekends and extra hours in the evening when they would be working. And the biggest thing that I found was funding for having the school open, maintain um, lights, power, people to teach, people to supervise, people to maintain the computer system and make repairs. So there was a lot of uh, positive and negative in this issue. On August 8, 2011, Mashable reported that Comcast, a cable and internet provider, is launching a new program to offer discounted internet service and computers to low-income low families. The internet service fee is $9.95 a month, and when families enroll in the program, they qualify to purchase a netbook computer for $145. Families in Massachusetts qualify for this program if they have at least one child on receiving free school lunches. In addition to the low-cost computer and internet access, Comcast is providing free internet training, both available online and in print. Also says in person, but I haven't been able to find out any information about the in person training. This program does not address the needs of families without children, families too impoverished to pay even these reduced fees, or families who struggle financially but don't qualify for free lunches. Even so, it will address a large portion of families in Massachusetts without computers and internet access. Massachusetts has spent state funds and stimulus dollars to ensure that all Massachusetts residents have access to the Internet. This map, created by the Massachusetts Broadband Institute, shows where and what type of broadband technologies are available. It may be hard to see, but there are no pink areas on the map, and pink represents the areas where there's no broadband available. So that means that all areas of the state have either wireless or wired broadband access, or both. The sixth option our task force team addressed is a need to provide information literacy courses to enhance computer skills and enable knowledgeable use of digital technologies. We suggest funds to be used for creating more courses, creating more locations for those courses, providing fee waivers for the registration fees, and providing transportation or providing waivers for transportation. A great example of the courses that are offered right now would be a computer literacy workshop provided by Boston Public Library at this time. This could be a model for our extension on how and what to provide to people in need. 
Option 7 focuses on developing free online educational content, giving first priority to content most relevant to lower socioeconomic groups before content that's re relevant to the rest of the public. We should use the tools that we have. Web already has plenty of free online educational tools that we could use. We could also enhance them by making them more specific to certain groups. Uh, funds should be used to, pre to provide resources similar to the link provided by the Boston Public Library. This link is free to users and it did not take much funds to be created. Uh, click on the link to see how interactive and easy this little tutorial is on basic computer use skills. Our alternative will focus on resolving current support issues in existing labs, in schools, libraries, community centers, etc. Many educational moments are lost due to support issues. Our current labs require substantial budgets to be functional. Those budgets are not always in place. Funds should be used to provide resources to keep our existing labs running smoothly. As the task force for the Massachusetts State Superintendent of Public Instruction, we believe that we should expand school hours to make available support and resources such as literature and other educational information. We recommend using our allotted $50 million towards hiring staff, including staff who can manage to the volunteers, buying and replacing equipment, maintaining the school, and developing educational materials to support the needs of students and adults. By combining options 1, 2, 6, 7, and adding this important step of support, we believe we will see a tremendous difference in our digital inequality.